can't escape. She's got plans for you. So, Universal Pictures had the grand idea to have a monsters universe called Dark Universe. And this is the first movie, The Mummy, starring Tom Cruise. My name is Brendan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So actually, Universal Pictures tried to launch this a few years ago with their Dracula Untold movie starring Luke Evans that came out in 2014. Not too many people saw that film nor liked it, so they just decided to scrap that and start over this year with The Mummy starring Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise, yes, he is the main star in this movie. When I first heard he was attached, of course, I was excited. I pretty much love everything Tom Cruise has to do. Top Gun, Mission Impossible, anything else he's done. Uh, the Last Samurai, I am a fan of his. His movie life, not much his personal life. Now, this film is directed by Alex Kurtzman. If you know that name, um, he is known for a lot of the films that he either produced or wrote over the past few years. He's really not known as a prominent director. He has only directed one uh, film before this, but prior to that, it was a few uh, TV shows. But this is actually... I mean, his first real feature was like a comedic comedic drama. I forgot the name, but this is actually his real semi-big blockbuster. He, he's been part of uh, Transformers, that writing department uh, with Robert Orkey, or Orsi, also uh, Star Trek. And um, I forgot the other picture, Transformers, Star Trek, and also uh, The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So this is his uh, first real feature. And when it comes to movies like this with The Mummy, where it has to do with spells and curses and magic and myths and legends and things like that, I want a great story to start things off, to set the tone for the entire film, and also just to set the tone or to set the rules of the universe that you're going to be creating. And I don't mean the whole dark universe. I just mean the universe in general for the film that you're trying to make and put on screen. You know, we have to know what's what and how this started and how this ends up here. And that needs to make sense throughout the film and still tie together at the end of it. And what I do like about The Mummy so far at the beginning of this film is just the way it started. It just took its time going back into the past hundreds and thousands of years ago, just to let you know what was going on back in the day early in London and also different parts of Ad uh, Africa, Egypt especially. Now, like I said, Tom Cruise is the star of this film, but his character was a little bit arrogant and stupid, especially in the beginning. I did not like that about his character, but that's nothing that carried on throughout the film. Now, one of the scenes I really loved in this movie, they did very well, is they showed it a lot in the trailer. Once they get the tomb of the mummy and they have it in the cargo plane and they're trying to fly back to civilization, there is a crash and the plane is tumbling down and people are flying out the plane and Tom Cruise, he crashes and he wakes up. That whole plane sequence was amazing. I mean, just the way they were showing them inside of the plane, flying through the air, tumbling all over each other in one constant shot without it breaking uh, for any extra takes. I thought that was splendid, well done. I was sitting there watching like, man, you know, how are they doing this? This is, you know, really creative. It was a long, thorough scene. It wasn't real quick. And you really just got to see how it looks inside of a plane when it's thousands of feet in the air, nose diving to the ground and actually like what it looks like on the inside of a plane. They didn't even have to do that. They didn't have to put that much detail in it. They could have just shown a few shots here and there and then just made you assume that the plane crashed. But they spent a lot of time and money and effort for this plane sequence. And I just want to give it praise because it was one of the highlights of the film for me. Another great thing I liked about this movie is just the storytelling and the exposition that they were giving you about the mummy and the lore and everything that happened back in the day. I started out this review talking about how the film started off, but they didn't just leave it there with the story. Throughout the film, they kept going back to that, filling in different spots and different pieces to make a whole puzzle. And it just really came to fruition, not just at the end of the film, but throughout, even in the middle, you know, you're learning more and more and more about the mummy, the technique, why this, this character did this, why this character did that. It's like every 20 minutes, you're getting like new nuggets of information that just gets you more excited about the film for the ultimate payoff, the ultimate showdown. But that's where my complaints with the film starts to begin. Another thing is the mummy. 
I want a worthy threat, someone that is, if I touch them or look at them the wrong way, they're going to kill me or I'm going to be possessed and do all these crazy things. And as far as Sophia Botella's character, Aminette, I believe that was her mummy's name. She was fine. She was powerful. She was also a very uh, seductive um, with all of her just evil, you know, wicked ways. But she's not the only mummy in this movie. There are other mummies in this movie, and I hated them. I love the design of them, looking all old and decrepit and decomposed with bandages hanging off and the way they're moving around, all their mannerisms and things like that. That was nice, but they still pose no threat. When they came to the action, as far as they are concerned, it was just a big goof fest. They might as well just do a subtitle on the screen that said, now it's time for Scooby-Doo and Friends and cut on the cue music or whatever, because that's exactly what it felt like when they're going around attacking people and trying to kill people. And actually, when they were actually, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but when they were attacking other people, that was cool. But when they were engaged with Tom Cruise and the other lead actress, it, it just was too funny. It was just too many jokes. And it just kind of ruined it. I mean, like, this is supposed to be a serious moment where people are supposedly supposed to die or get hurt. But the way they're going about the action is just really goofy. And I'm just kind of sitting there. It's like, okay, take this seriously. I mean, these are mummies oh, that have come back to life. And another thing about the movie that is really frustrating is it is a lot of jokes. This movie could have easily been like a mystery horror thriller but instead they made it a mystery comedy drama in a way with sprinkles of comedy here and they just could have had sprinkles of horror here they just i mean and i'm not i don't want to lie to you or over exaggerate some of the jokes were funny and they did land but some of them did not especially i remember one part towards the beginning of the movie where it's taking the film is taking itself seriously and you're getting a lot of great exposition then it cuts away to another character that's let's just call him a ghost and he's just making all these jokes and then they try to switch back into the great dialogue and then switch back over to this guy that's making these you know just weird body movements it's just like you know it's just a little bit unbalanced i'm not going to say that none of the i mean i did laugh at some of the jokes and people in the theater were laughing at some of the jokes that i was not laughing at but as far as a whole i would just have to split the comedy and have with 50 50. some of the jokes were funny some of the jokes were not there's also some easter eggs here and there since this is a dark universe they do tease you with what's to come and what other monsters they have in store for you uh to entertain you i was very shocked when they did reveal that easter egg as soon as they do it you're gonna know who this person is right away. I didn't see it coming. It's not like some Darth Vader reveal where he's like, oh my God, you know, oh, you know, it's nothing like that. But, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I know that character and I can't wait to see them do more. And they tease you a little bit. Then later on, they give you a lot more. Not going to spoil it for you, but, you know, it, do, it did look promising and it makes me excited. Something else that makes me excited is just what's to come. Because they're going to have a Frankenstein movie, a Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, the Invisible Man, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Creature of the Black Lagoon. Some of those people are just uh, uh, titles I just named I'm not too familiar with. But I am excited. I mean, the same thing that they're doing with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DCEU, they're also doing with monsters. And I mean, hey, why not? You know, that's what people want to see. That's what I want to see. It looks good. It looks promising you know, bring it on, let's go. But one other concern I had by going into this movie, I always wanted to know like, okay, when they're mummifying people, why don't they just destroy the body and burn it and chop it up? I mean, you know, mail one part to Alaska, one part to Asia, one part to South America. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but why do they preserve the body? You know, it kind of made sense in this movie. They, it, it, they didn't explain it, you know, as, as best as I thought they could, but at least they did address it and it made since overall guys i did enjoy the film it was fun but at the same time it could have been a lot better and the biggest sin that it committed were times where they were trying to be supposed to be serious in the action uh, it was ruined uh with too many jokes and that just kind of uh, diluted the overall threat of the film there wasn't too many times where i felt any of the characters were actual in any danger and actually felt that everyone was going to be okay and, um, you know, if I'm right or wrong, you're just going to have to see for yourself. If I had to rate this film out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, a 7 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. 
Have you seen the mummy? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. Hey guys, I really need your help. There's a little movie coming out next year called Black Panther. It comes out February of 2018 and I really want to go. I love comic books. I love Marvel. I love Black Panther. I'm black. And also the movie comes out in Black History Month. So that would just be a dream come true for me. Is it a long shot, you know, that I'll make it? You know, yes, it is. But I'm going for it. So help me out and get there by sharing this video 1,000 times. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can go to my website, book marketing, and also look me up on social media. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for The Mummy starring Tom Cruise. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.